So shall we start the uh, the episode? Yeah, I guess we might as well start the episode. We'll imagine that uh, music is going. Let me pull up I can my imagine notes. it. I can, can ima- you imagine I it? Can. Oh, I can. I can. Hold on. Before we get started, actually, I got to... Um, oh, why did it just drop my text size to one? That is insane. <laughs> uh, why would anyone want that? Gremlins, man. Gremlins. gremlins. It's the gremlins. It is. They're here, man. time fucking gremlins do i have to say that <laughs> setting up for this episode has been very complicated technologically and i'm wondering yes. are we playing with fire <laughs> hello dig for bones Welcome to the Least Haunted Podcast, a place where science, skepticism, humor, and anthropology meet to discuss all things spooky, haunting, supernatural, and sometimes just the plain ridiculous. I'm your host, Cody Franks, and joining me as almost always is gregariously gossiping and grandiosely gesticulating (laughs) the generally gentle genesis and yet greatly gruesome growth of gremlins, giggling and guffawing genially, a goofy and good-natured gentleman, <laughs> garnished gaudily in goblin gold, grabbed with guile, glee, and goals of generosity, the guaranteeably gentle, genuine... Garth. Yep, that's me. I gossip <laughs> greatly, gallantly, with gold <laughs> bullion, or gold galleons. Anyway, welcome to the Least Haunted Podcast. And joining me, as yeah. several times before, is several times. good... Our good yeah. friend Travis, you've been yes. here so many times that I cannot even count the number of times you've been here. It's like four <laughs> or something. Welcome, I, welcome. Uh, Travis. I'm surprised uh, no, nobody added something about gobbling gherkins, or did I miss that? that was, that <laughs> it's was, quite uh, possible no. you did. That was a long one. <laughs> I know it was a very long one. There was <laughs> Not a lot that included. They're ever short. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think including your name, Garth. Uh, your name makes it a nice even thirty G's. Wow. Like, yeah. That, uh, Nice. In that alliteration. And that uh, that moniker uh, was another group effort uh, kicked off once again by our hero, Ken. Thank you, uh, Ken. He is the uh, MVP of Garth's monikers. And then again, with the assist, we had By Barbarian swooped in and Havelock. And then I uh, kind of added that last line to just kind of stretch it out. There. I'm not sure um, what, how, you know, we usually keep the uh, episode topics somewhat under wraps. I'm not sure that we did it this time, but did they know? What we were yeah. doing it on because that is alliteratively, we're doing gremlins, guys. G yeah. for gremlins. <laughs> <laughs> Least haunted is brought to you by the letter G for gremlins. <laughs> what what is the record for the number of words in the moniker? Do we do we know what the Ooh, record is? Cody might know because thirty thirty is pretty substantial. I, I I think I've 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 cracked thirty before. I think thirty three. Yeah, wow. it, it, I, I don't think we ever hit forty. Remember. No, we've probably done most letters in the alphabet as well. So there's probably repeat words. Yeah, there's only so many. There's you only know, so many words in and... the English language. <laughs> we'll have to start doing it in different languages. <laughs> uh, I I did. Oh no, I did the int- didn't I? I did it once in Norwegian. You did. Uh, for the yes. troll episode. Yes, yes, you did. I always thought it would be fun to just start the episode in Spanish and see how far we could get. And if anyone... <laughs> Before anybody knows. <laughs> well, obviously they'd notice right away, but it's just like, d- 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 is there some kind of AI translation? What- what's going on? Hola! Did I-, I actually did translate the whole the whole intro into Spanish once, and yeah, we'll, we'll do that sometime. La Llorona would have been perfect. I, I did babble. Um, for this last year, I started it uh, as a, a Christmas present for this last year, and I also took several years of it in high school and college and what have you. And um, currently, I cannot speak any Spanish because uh, I didn't really – none of it stuck in high school and college, uh, and um, though I've had yeah. this subscription, I have not put my best effort into it. So I haven't tried <laughs> Babbel. We've, and Cody and I do Duolingo. Duolingo. Um, Dude, I hear good things. Kind of I... It has its shortcomings, I think, but it's it's nice yeah. in certain ways. Um, yeah, it's it's by no means perfect. Um, there are some errors that sometimes happen. Well, just uh, I, I mean, I the learning the per- style like is not yeah. necessarily as good as like taking a real class, but there, 
there's something to it, yeah. Well, it, it gamifies, um, doesn't it? Like, it, you can compete with your yeah. friends it, and challenges It, it like is that. really fun that way. That's why I enjoy it. I mean, I, I'm up to almost three uh, days. Yeah. Wow. Uh, today is day 1053 for me. <laughs> nice. And uh, I was notified, because all the apps are doing their end-of-the-year wrap-up type sh- shit. Oh, you know, like yeah. Spotify wraps and stuff. Uh, they informed me that I am in the top 2% of Duolingo users nice. globally. There you go. <laughs> I found out I'm in the top one percent. I I I know we jumped off of the Spotify thing years ago, but I personally still use it, and um, I'm in the top one percent of listeners uh, to the band Cheek Face. Have you guys ever heard Cheek Face? No. no, they're this very no. weird band. I fucking love them so much. Anyway, they, I got like a special <laughs> little like I got a special little video from the main singer saying like it looks like you're in the top one percent. Thanks. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> oh, anyway, that, Gremlins, that, uh, Gremlins, Gremlins. Let's talk about yes, Gremlins. Gremlins. <laughs> okay, Gremlins. Um, oh, also, uh, besides this episode being brought to you by the letter G for Gremlins, it's also bre- being brought to you by Patreon. Uh, or our, at least our Patreon supporters. Uh, so we have a Patreon, everybody. Uh, Patreon.com slash Least Haunted. Uh, go there, check us out, and we'll talk more about that at the end. But just wanted to point that out at the beginning. Good point, Cody. Um, that was a good point to point out. I yeah, yeah. I would have forgotten. For, for those who don't know, putting on a podcast is not – I mean, it sometimes can be as simple as turn everything on, hit record, and then hit publish. But – Honestly, with a quality yeah. podcast like this one, it's really not. A lot goes into it. People don't realize there's equipment, there's hours. I mean, there's prep, yeah. there's editing, all of this. So I, I like yeah. to say we're an artisanal podcast. Yes. <laughs> we we really do do a lot of editing and research. Like it's not it's not as it, it, it we make it sound easy. It is not. <laughs> Yeah. No. So I mean, if if you enjoy the content, go throw a couple of bucks. It doesn't really take that much, and, and if everybody advocating. does it together, thank you for 100%. advocating, Travis. That's it. I I throw my ten bucks a month. I'll be <laughs> buddy. Yeah, that's, yeah. And, and, and and to show it for it, you got you got your name in a Garth's corner. That's one of the that's things right. that can happen. Well, Yep. He believes in it so much that he's not just, you know, a fan. He's part of the company. That's right. That's right. That's I, true. I'm not just a, a hair club for men member. I'm also a client. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So, um, Gremlins. Gremlins. Uh, what, do, what do we know about Gremlins, gentlemen? Don't get them wet. Don't feed them after midnight. When can um, you start feeding them again? Yeah. What is the rule on that? When does it reset? <laughs> I, they never said. Dawn? <laughs> they specifically break that, like, the fourth wall to talk about that in the sequel. Because the sequel is just so buck fucking weird. I, I, never saw, I never saw the sequel. I never saw the first one. I only you saw the You haven't seen sequel. the first one? No, I only saw two. What? You have never? What? Wait, wait. So you're like, you're like me with Back to the Future. When I was a kid, I only saw the third one. <laughs> We had a copy of the third one, what? and that for the longest time, sense. I only ever saw the third Back to the Future. Oh that's man, great. that's as bad as like <laughs> we we dragged my my poor father to Return of the King, and he didn't see. He didn't it. See <laughs> it. Oh no, <laughs> it's gibberish. It's gibberish. Look, oh, I I have not seen the original Terminator. Okay, I haven't seen that either. What? Terminator what? Two. What? Terminator you know, Two. That, that it came the, out. Saw that it in was the, the theaters same for me. I saw Terminator Two before I saw Terminator One. Yeah, yeah. And actually, wow. it was fine. I understood everything I needed to know. Oh yeah, for no, it, it all 2. made sense. It was yeah. a very simple plot. The first one's a very simple plot. Yeah. <laughs> I think I saw Return of the Jedi. Was the first Star Wars oh, movie I saw. Oh, that's far out. Wow. That's because it's the Muppets, you know. It's the Muppets. That's right. Speaking of Muppets and puppets and, and Gremlins, <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> so uh, those rules about Gremlins that we were just referring to from the film franchise uh, completely made up for the the film. Oh, okay, that what? wasn't um, a traditional thing. No. Okay. Wait, that um, that's not real. The hell you say, Cody? Uh, <laughs> Tell us about the well, real Gremlins, Cody. <laughs> although actually, although although the getting them wet thing actually does kind of tie to something else. Um, but that I'm getting ahead of ourselves. Um, first of all, as I said, all made up, uh, the idea of gremlins, not as old as you might think. If you had to guess when the idea of gremlins started, when would you guys, uh, you know, hazard that was? I, I, I was thinking 1800s until when planning this episode, you told me, so I better not say. Oh, well then you recuse yourself. I recuse myself. <laughs> Travis, tra- moving on. Travis, when do you think gremlins started? <laughs> Yeah, honestly, I, I I thought Gremlins started with the movie franchise, and so I didn't really I didn't know much more about it. And then Cody was like, "Look, we're gonna do this thing about Gremlins and and the history of them." And so I started thinking, like, 
this has to be some ancient tradition. So I thought clearly going back 14, 1500s type of thing is what it must uh-huh. be. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, it's it's so recent that it is uh, within the last 100 years. Wow. Um, it, yeah. <laughs> In fact, it's uh, about as a little younger than flight. And as it turns out, flight and powered aircraft actually are a key component of the Gremlin mythos. It's based on much older folk traditions. Of course, you know, there's always these small uh, human-like spirits or monsters in European folklore and global folklore as well. Um, we've talked about a few of them on the show in passing in the past, like you have the, uh, the Tomta or the Nisa of uh, Scandinavia, who are what lead to our Christmas elves. Uh, we've ah. got leprechauns. Um, the borrowers. Brownies. The borrowers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Brownies, uh, kobolds. In fact, we've talked about, I think, back in the very first episode of Jeff the Mongoose, the, the idea of a mischievous talking spirit inside your home uh, was just building on even older uh, There's myths. a long tradition of some kind of creature that, like, steals your socks. Or yeah. move something that around. Eater of Mischievi- socks. Mischievous. <laughs> the, th- the external thing you blame for, y- you you know, putting things in the wrong spot, which I bl- do all the time. So I've got lots of gremlins in my yeah. house. Underpants um, gnomes are one. Yeah, there's yeah. another one. Underpants mm-hmm. gnomes. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> but the coining of the name gremlin, it combined uh, attributes of those earlier spirits. Um, but the, the, the term doesn't show up in written records until the late 20s. Oh, Maybe. okay. Uh, it's, it's as near as folklorists can reliably ascertain. Uh, they, there's like oral tradition of people saying that it started in World War One, but you don't see it um, written about until later. Um, but once it starts showing up in print, it spreads really quickly. And a lot of that is uh, due in part to this little thing. I don't know. Maybe you've heard of it. It's called uh, World War II. Oh, ah. I was going to say Prohibition. Is what brought this about, but I, sorry. <laughs> okay, so uh, one of the first uses of the word gremlin in print comes from 1929 in a British publication called Aeroplane. <laughs> Quote. Can you do this in a British accent, please? <laughs> no, you have to do the okay. transatlantic ac- accent. Yeah, actually, yeah, that's, that's even that's better. Yeah. Yeah. Do it. yeah, do it like Catherine Hepburn. Aeroplane. <laughs> I'd have to shake my head. There is a class of abhorred loathed <laughs> by all high and mighty slaves nice. who work and get but little, little thanks for their labor. Yet they are both skilled and many, many men with many talents. They are but a herd of gremlins, gremlins who do all the flying, gremlins who do much instructing, work shunned by the wing commanders. What? Um, <laughs> yeah, so. What is, what is he talking about? So it actually comes from like a, 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 a poem oh. uh, that is, at, at this point, it seems that gremlin is a term for the grunts in the, in the air, in the air, their, their oh, Royal okay. Air Force Got is like it. a new thing. So it's, it's the people who do all the shit work, the mechanics, okay. um, the flight instructors, the ones who like get none of the glory because it's all like, you know, the wing commanders and the aces who get the glory. But the whole thing would be meaning it wouldn't run without these gremlins like grunt. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. The roadies of the war. Yeah. Uh, there yeah. is a contradictory description that comes from a different British publication that describes gremlins as being a nuisance of airmen, and this is as early as maybe World War I. Hmm. Um, it's in a magazine called The Spectator. It's a British magazine. Uh, also, this gremlin thing, all British right now. Okay. This is all starting with British, the Royal Air Force. So uh, Spectator it says, quote, The old Royal Naval Air Service in 1917 and the newly constituted Royal Air Force in 1918 have detected the existence of a horde of mysterious and malicious spirits whose purpose in life was to bring about as many as possible of the inexplicable mishaps, which in those days, as now, trouble an airman's life. Mm. Uh, so it's starting to take on, it starts off like the guys who are doing the work, they're the gremlins, but now it's kind of, it's this other version of it is, uh, no, it's actual little men. There's actually like little creatures who make things go wrong. That's an interesting uh, shift because you start off with the underappreciated person that actually is really essential to make everything work and then the term shifts to saboteurs yeah (laughs) yeah currently the uh the the little men on planes that cause problems are called trump supporters and anti-maskers over the past five years that's (laughs) yeah we should call them gremlins we should should. call yeah yeah okay let's start a movement (laughs) 
That'll help. Uh, That'll really help the national discourse. Let's do that. I'm, sh I'm sure it will. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, this this shift, however, from uh, actual human beings being gremlins to little spirits that are causing trouble, actually does have a function, um, and that will come in later as well. See, I like to tease these things out. <laughs> I'm, on, um, I'm on pins and needles. <laughs> so in 1942, uh, Collier's Magazine uh, had an article called What Every Airman Should Know. And it was by uh, American war co correspondent Quentin Reynolds. And he said, quote, the real reason for the gremlins fiendish warfare against uh, airmen was that the RAF lads made one mistake. They laughed at the gremlins. And the fact is the little people above everything else do not like to be laughed at. Um, mm. He said that somebody supposedly had heard uh, a disembodied voice in one of the hangars say, quote, you'll have to get that RAF to stop laughing. So uh, apparently they get pissed off because somebody laughed at them. And now that's like, yeah, it's this. Uh, it's like when you fuck with crows. Yeah. You know about this? Don't fuck with crows. Oh, are they are they vengeful? Crows? Oh, dude. Uh, in a in really? a very serious way. Oh, OK. <laughs> you, you don't know about crows, Garth? I, I know. I know. I know <laughs> some things about crows. Don't don't fuck with crows. <laughs> Just do not. <laughs> Yeah, they um, crows. If you fuck with one crow, it it's not enough that, that crow pick like goes after you. It tells other crows. Yeah. They and are so very crows smart. You, yeah. So crows you've never even encountered will fuck with you, and then it gets generational because yes. then they start teaching their kids. Yes, like, it's a vendetta. It is like a, a family vendetta. These crows against you. So, so yeah, that's the same thing with the gremlins. Re real talk on this. It was I think the University of Washington mm -hmm. that was doing a lot of testing on the intelligence of crows and like that. They very quickly realized that anybody interacting with the crows, because they would keep them and then release them, anybody interacting with them had to wear some kind of mask or disguise, because uh. there was, in fact, a graduate student that left, came back years later, and the local crows started attacking them because they remembered from being wow. in the lab. So years they're like, no, you later. have to hide your identity because the wow. crows will come for you and your children. It's real, man. Don't, <laughs> yeah. don't mess wow. with crows. They were testing the fences for weaknesses systematically. They remember. <laughs> we, there's a few crows that hang around our place, but uh, we get along really well, fortunately. Okay, interesting. Yeah. Oh yeah, they can be they they can become your friends. Oh yeah, uh, they, they, crows, they're, they've been pretty cool. Yeah, know. super there's smart. Like, you know, people. You can, yeah, you, you, can, can you can train them to get stuff for you. You can absolutely train them to trade you paper money for stuff they want. And then they will go out around get, town and they'll, they'll steal paper pockets. money and bring it to you in exchange yeah. for peanuts and shit. It's yeah, they're smart. <laughs> wow, I could. Uh, I'll have to go talk to our, our our local crows. That could be a good source of revenue for me. Th this okay, is how so, we're gonna um, fund Sequidia. This is how we'll fund yes. Sequidia yeah. with, the, with a murder of crows. A murder of crows. <laughs> murder for hire. Yeah. Yeah, yes. <laughs> All right, uh, another uh, thing, uh, another um, publication at this time is an article in the Royal Air Force Journal called The Gremlin Question, which anytime that's like World War II and the somebody has question, like, an article, yeah. mm, it's like, oh, whoa. Yikes. Um, but this is actually uh, a humorous account of one airman who uh, ended up being stationed in like northern Russia during the war uh, and with other British, because there was like a lend lease. Like, you know, we think of like the allies, like the British were in it a lot longer than America. Right. And they had like their own airmen and soldiers participating in Russian actions on the other side of Europe and so forth. And so this guy is with these other British airmen in Northern Russia and they start telling them about the gremlins and, uh, and how they fuck with your shit. And, um, <laughs> And that's where it, it starts becoming specifically like, yeah, mechanical issues on airplanes. Is, is there any indication um, of how seriously this was taken? Was it just kind of a, oh, that's a gremlins again? Or were they like really, like how much did they believe this? Tongue in cheek? No. It's hard to say. Okay. It's hard to say. Like there might have been people who actually, there were some who swear they saw things and oh, things okay. happened. Um, but it became such a part of the Royal Air Force culture that they actually started a whole campaign on their air bases of um, uh, propaganda built around gremlins that warn people. Uh, so here, I'm going to try to um, I drop it in the <laughs> loose gremlins section. sink ships. <laughs> uh, I don't know. That doesn't really work. Do you guys see your chat? I see my chat, but I see not what you're putting in. Yeah, mine's empty. 
What? Oh, because oh, you have to hit send. Oh, okay. All right, so um, it's the gremlins, dude. It's the fucking gremlins. All right, so <laughs> so, so Cody just sent us these. Um, w- I'll describe the first one, and, and maybe you could do the second one, Travis. The first one says, "Gremlins love to pitch things at your eyes," and here's a little a little drawn gremlin, uh, <laughs> who's has a little has a little uh, Bart Simpson. Uh, what do you call those? Uh, what do you mean? Catapult. He has oh, a uh, slingshot. Oh, slingshot. slingshot. He's slingshot. got a little slingshot. And Did you say handheld sh- catapult? Yeah, I was trying to I think of the it. word. No, that's <laughs> It's a great. little handheld catapult with it made of a wishbone. Anyway, um, <laughs> wear safety goggles. Okay, so in this case, the gremlins are are the, the embodiment of shards of metal that might fly into your eyes, so wear safety goggles. Back up our battle skies. What? Well, notice that that one without safety goggles, it is a woman who is shielding her eyes because she's on uh, an assembly during the line. war effort. Yeah. A lot of women working on making aircraft. That's Rosie yeah. the Riveter. Uh, she let her hair down, but I can tell it's her. Okay. So um, do you want to do the second one, Travis? Yeah, absolutely. Although I think uh, being that this was in, where was this in England? So it might be like yeah. Bridget, the uh, buffer or something like that. Oh yeah, that's Rosie right. Riveter. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the English. So <laughs> that's right. Yeah. We've got to, you know, translate it. Right. Uh, <laughs> for our British listeners, they just all, won't understand. They won't um, get it. <laughs> they spell color differently. Okay, so <laughs> so this second one is actually a little bit terrifying. This dude is carrying I don't know cylinders of something. Looks like I don't film canisters. But it does. It looks like film. Yeah, that's a, yeah. So he's carrying these walking and it looks like he has just rammed his head into a shelf which is precariously at eyeball height somebody should call osha for real and it says gremlins think it's fun to hurt you and like first of all this gremlin standing on the shelf didn't hit him with the shelf he walked into it like a duck. yeah wait a minute it looks (laughs) like he's gonna kick him in the head there's that's right he's running up like he's gonna bonk him um, there's another one standing by while the, oh, I see one of them pushed a film canister onto his toe, but then very sinister. There's one on his shoulder with a dagger who's about to stab him. This is crazy. It says use care always back up our battle skies. But like, yeah, uh, what, one of these things is not like the others, right? Three of yeah, these yeah, are like yeah, accidents yeah. and one of these is a murder. So I don't know what's going on here. What's the third uh, one going to be? <laughs> Oh, I wonder what this is referencing. So the the third one says, "Why help gremlins? Square corners and gremlins play. Round corners they stay away." And there's a little little horned gremlin poking into a corner and skipping. What are they talking about? Round. I I, I would imagine like air and water flow. It's better oh. if your pipes are rounded instead See, of a I quarter. See, th- I was thinking they're talking about smoothing out, like if they're if you're working in a metal shop, like rounding off things so that they won't. You, you know won't what? Have I'll, jagged edges. Maybe? I'll bet that's actually what it is. Yeah, instead of sharp edges, having rounded yeah. so you don't. Yeah, no, cut it's yourself. very abs- it's very abstract. It's clearly for a specific group of people who would know what they're talking about. Yeah. You know? Okay, I've got a few more that I will. Uh... We'll post this on, by the way, it, it, oh, yeah, <laughs> you're yeah. probably going to want to be... see this, everyone listening at home. We'll, we'll post it on the, um, whatchamacallit, the uh, um, Tumblr. Gre- gremlins yes. are for- floor greasers. Watch your step. Guys, I, I'm going to throw this out here. That sounds like a slur. And uh, Floor you greaser! Know. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? Floor greaser! It's like that's, <laughs> like, the, like the tone is there. Low, <laughs> low down, no good, dirty, rotten floor greasers. Yeah, uh, but no, it's oil. It's it's a uh, motor oil that's been spilled on the floor and not cleaned up. So as you see, uh, oh, this last one is about if you. This one looks like oh, this one's worried about drug use. Uh, don't do drugs. Gremlins are drugs as well. Apparently, oh, this it's guy's a guy ca- holding... carrying a, a can of dope and a giant <laughs> syringe. What the? F- <laughs> oh, 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 oh! I see. So yeah, and, and a, a sign that says, dude. you know, take it easy, right? You know, they, they have a <laughs> yeah, little bit yeah. of dope and take a nap. <laughs> Yeah, there's all these Pace gremlins yourself. that are giving him drugs while he sleeps. <clears throat> wow, that's that's something. Wow. So yeah, so they're using these gremlins I like that one. as yeah as uh, personifications of workplace mishaps, but also uh, carelessness that, in the long run, would actually hinder the war effort. Mm-hmm. So um, by 1942, though, uh, the 
these stories are starting to spread to uh, American airmen um, through just contact with their British counterparts. Uh, the actual descriptions of the, the gremlins themselves changes a lot, depending on who's telling it. And as you saw in those uh, propaganda pictures, there's a few different designs as well. Uh, sometimes they are like little, uh, what we would think of as tiny little elves um, or gnomes. Other times they are uh, small, like grotesque men with giant bat ears mm -hmm. or bat wings sometimes. In fact, there's a lot of things about them that are um, tied to aviation in their appearance. Sometimes they're depicted with little flight goggles. Um <laughs> There's going to be a cartoon version that we'll bring up in just a bit here that actually has like a tail fin coming out of his head. Um, <laughs> because the idea is that these gremlins, you know, they're if they're not living on the ground and hitching rides on airplanes, it might be that they actually are creatures of the air and oh. they just live in the air. Yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. Um, Makes sense why they would be so singularly focused on airplanes. Yeah. And then they start talking about uh, some of these publications are uh, the various types of gremlin. It's almost like almost like um, we've talked about like J Japanese yokai, how they have a yokai or a spirit for like an or a monster for any particular thing. Like there is a yokai of microwaves. There's a yokai <laughs> of playstations and so on. Same thing with the gremlins. Anything that can go wrong on your aircraft. A lot of things uh, can go wrong. <laughs> but there's like a specific gremlin who that is their job. There's the spark plug gremlin. Ah. There is the uh, like the coolant gremlin, the electric gremlin. So gremlins too, with all their crazy gremlins, actually pretty fucking accurate. Yeah. What if we did this? Everybody here gets to design their own gremlin. Yeah. yeah. Right on down to that sexy, sexy lady gremlin. Oh, I because... forgot about that one. That was that was confusing for young Travis. <laughs> she, w well, was she in the first one too? Because I remember a sexy no. lady gremlin. <laughs> no, I think uh, I don't think they had a full on you know big boob. Could there be a female gremlin? Lipstick boobies, bitch. You had me and little gremlin, but JJ. I love it so much that it's not only in the movie, but it's definitely in the movie. There's no backseats on that one, no penny taxis. Yes. Oh no, uh, I don't. Okay, maybe it was just a gremlin with lipstick in the first yeah. one. Yeah. Uh, so in 1943, there's the American Women's Air Force Service, or WASPs, and uh, it's uh, they adopt a female gremlin named Fifnella as their mascot. That rolls off the tongue. Fifth Nella, F I F N E L L A. Fifth Nella, Fifth Nella. Huh. Yeah, kind of like how the crows can be your friends. Some gremlins could actually be pretty friendly, ah. uh, and so they start adopting them as mascots for specific flight units or bombers, uh, including one that is called the. Uh, it was a, a bomber called the Red Gremlin. And it was noteworthy because most of its flight crew would later transfer to another uh, bomber plane that played a very important role in the war. And that is that it's the same guys who flew the Enola Gay oh, wow. uh, to drop the atomic bomb. Earlier, they served on a plane dropping bombs on Europe called the Red Gremlin. Wow. Yeah. Very interesting. Um, so the um, with that propaganda, as well as kind of um, serving as just a, a fun way to talk about safety, it actually has the role of... Those original gremlins who are the grunts doing all the work, it actually kind of removes blame from people who are fucking up at their job and puts it on this other thing. So it actually helps morale in that way as well, because if everybody's supposed to be in a team, it's much easier than like when something goes wrong rather than like, I'm going to go beat oh, the shit out of yeah. this guy oh, later. I fucked up. It's like, or he yeah, fucked it's up. more like, yeah. yeah, the gremlins did it. And now we're going to get to another big moment in the gremlin story, a big change or a pivotal uh, yeah, pivotal moment, which is um, what boosts the notoriety even further. And that is the combination of two famous men uh, who meet and work together on Gremlins. And that is Roald Dahl of uh -huh. uh, Charlie the Chocolate Factory yeah, yeah. and Walt fucking Disney. They met? Yes. Are we going to dig for bones first? Uh, this is the last thing before we dig for oh, bones. Oh, okay. Cool. Just check in. <laughs> Actually, we got a little. Is it? Is am I taking too long? No, no, I no, no. That's all right. We started no, no. late. I I'm taking too long with the tangents I'm taking us down. That's no, no, that's problem. That's that's what's, <laughs> that's the whole point of this show. It's it's all good, dude. Keep going with the tangents. Okay, so so Roald Dahl, he's British, uh, not an author yet. He's actually a fighter pilot, an actual certified flying ace. Now, to be an ace, 
you have to shoot down five or more enemy aircraft. So next time you're reading, you know, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory or The Witches or any of his other books, just keep in mind, uh, this man has killed before in aerial combat, which is... Yeah, yeah not, um, not just killed before, at least five. <laughs> at least five times. Yikes. A minimum of five times. Um <laughs> And so he actually attains the rank of wing commander, not just an old video game, an actual rank. Um, but then in 1942, he is what they call invalided uh, out of active duty d due to health problems. Uh, huh. I guess something happened where it might have been, you know, a uh, result of flying uh, G forces or whatever. But he starts like just blacking out for no reason, which is not a sk something you want in a pilot. Yeah, yeah, that's that's probably not something that you can have happen when somebody's in an airplane flying it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so he he gets um, assigned as the assistant air attaché at the British Embassy in Washington D.C. And and while serving as a diplomat in Washington D.C., he writes a short story about the gremlins these little creatures that he knew from his time in the royal air force and a copy of the short story gets sent to eleanor roosevelt <laughs> and she's delighted by it and then through a kind of chain of like i know this person who knows that person it ends up on the desk of walt disney wow wow Walt disney then uh tells rolled that he, he commissions him to like take this story and write it into a full-on book as a treatment and we're gonna like we're going into production on a movie right now whoa like this is gonna be a movie what what Ooh. movie was this yeah i don't remember this ever being a rolled doll book i ever read a, a rolled doll book or a disney movie i'm trying to think back like this none of this is standing out that's because it in true gremlins messing with things fashion the project fell through and it didn't happen no uh, that would have been that would have been cool the book gets published Hey, there they um, are. It's actually it's actually Roald Dahl's first ever published book is The Gremlins, uh, which is the story of a Royal Air Force pilot. Gremlins fuck with his plane and he crashes in the ocean. But then he like convinces these gremlins to team up with him so they can go fight Hitler, which <laughs> I kind of want to see this. movie. Yeah, now. that's a great. Yeah, plot. <laughs> that's funny. I, I've, read, uh, I've read a lot of Roald Dahl. I, I never even heard of that book. Huh. Um, and yeah, they got so far into production where they were like doing storyboards. The scripts were written. Uh, and then just because of, like, the nature of the war, even though it could have been a really good propaganda piece, uh, their efforts had to be focused more on um, producing shorts for, like, there's, oh, there's a yeah. lot of Disney I've cartoons seen those that are like. Donald Duck yeah. is a Nazi soldier and then and then wakes up in America and he's so happy that he yeah, doesn't have to be. <laughs> Did you ever see that? I have dress? not seen the. No. Oh, it's no, great. This... Look up Donald Donald Duck in, in the as in the Gestapo. It's it's amazing. Uh, <laughs> um, there was a whole bunch of them. Look, I'm, I'm gonna throw this out here. When I woke up this morning, I did not think I was gonna hear that phrase, Garth. So you yeah. Well, I, I might I might be paraphrasing. So to, that's not exactly it, but yeah. Donald Duck finds himself in in Germany in the war, and you know. Is is this all? You, oh, you know what? They, they use they use that Spike Jones song, uh, "De Fuhrer's Face." So we pile, pile, right in the Fuhrer's face. Yeah. Is is, yeah. is this um, stuff on YouTube? Yeah. It, yeah. I uh, I'm gonna go down a rabbit yeah, hole. Yeah, check tonight. it out. Check it out. <laughs> Speaking of rabbit holes <laughs> and going down rabbit holes on YouTube, so this Disney movie falls apart. Another thing that ran into it was they couldn't ascertain who actually owned the term gremlin like dude somebody just made this up so we can't just like oh. which is weird for disney because disney kind of has a habit of just saying uh yoink yeah why would disney have a problem with this yeah <laughs> yeah right they're like oh nobody owns it disney owns it disney owns it now <laughs> so because they don't do anything with it and and the story of gremlins is now widespread enough just in general this concept going down the rabbit hole the next per uh, person who uh runs with this ball is bugs bunny and warner brothers and they do a series of shorts that are war propaganda videos about bugs bunny matching wits with a gremlin ah. and the gremlin actually like fucking out bugs bunny's bugs bunny wow that's <laughs> um, something just kicks his ass <laughs> wow yeah. get a load of this folks it says here a constant menace to pilots are the gremlins who wreck planes with their diabetes Sabotage. <laughs> Gremlins. <laughs> oh, murder. 
and and the 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 gremlin from these shorts and these are on youtube as well one is called like the long hair another one's called falling hair and then oh and then here we go bugs bunny versus the gremlins um (laughs) i think i've seen this one i okay yeah that looks very familiar so this gremlin though he is got an interesting color scheme well, first of all, his head has wings on it, and actually when he turns his head, it looks like he has a little ponytail that is a tail end of a plane, or actually it looks like it's coming out of his butt. Uh, he has a tail that is just the tail fins of a plane, but he is uh, blue, yellow, red. It's actually two shades of blue. That Those are the actual colors of training aircraft for U.S. airmen during World War II. Ah. Really? Yes. This would have been a recognized color scheme to audiences at yeah. the time? Yeah, or at least people. Or at least people, yeah, in the war, in in, in the Air Force. Interesting. Now, we touched briefly on the origin of the name, but we didn't really get into it in depth. Um, So the name Gremlin, the word Gremlin, seemingly being a new word invented in the 20th century, uh, has a few origins. It's possible that it derives from the Old English Grema or Gremian, Hmm. which means to vex or annoy. Uh, mm. And then this is com- and then this was combined with the word goblin to make gremlin. Uh-huh. Um, but however, in Irish Gaelic, gruimin uh, can mean ill-tempered little fellow. So oh. that's also very close to gremlin. Mm-hmm. And then in German, there's a word gremlain, uh, which means a small bit of grief. Uh, so this, so having many cognates of this word that all sound like gremlin. In fact, they start with the G R, that hard G R mm. sound. Um, this could be the connection of just Germanic languages. However, Irish Cel- Gaelic is not Germanic. It's a Celtic language. So this actually could be some holdover from like Indo-European language. There might be some like very old word uh, that is like at the core of several other language groups where this idea of GR meaning something that's either troubling or, you know, dangerous. Um, think of like Grendel in Beowulf as well as that gr sound. Um, But also it could just be cultural transmission. It could be these people are trading with each other. So maybe the word isn't that old. It just got started somewhere and passed I like the idea of Um, an ancient word that turned into a bunch of words in different languages that then came back together again. Yeah. You know, to become, to become the word, like it it, it reconstituted itself. (laughs) I I like it especially because usually with something like that in popular media, it was going to be something like, You know, oh, but it's this, like, evil spirit of the ancient ones, and then when it comes back around and it's this, like, big world-ending thing, and here it's like, this is a a small irritation or annoyance, yeah, (laughs) and it has survived for (laughs) hundreds of years and thousands of years. It's yeah, a diminished form of what it once was. That's <laughs> either, right. Either it once was or that like, you know, 20,000 years ago or whatever, humans were like, no, there's just this one little thing. Maybe it's like, you know, some kind of, maybe it's some kind of rodent that just fucking used to get into the grain or something yeah. or, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you and know. That was, there yeah. was a word for it. Yeah. 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 There's a word for it. Yeah. Um, however, there's another theory Ooh. for the origin, origin of the name Gremlin, Ooh. which is independent of the just mentioned linguistic origin of the name. However, it isn't too far removed. Only this time, it involves beer. But first, <laughs> dig ah. oh, the suspense. Did you grow up with a lack of parental supervision? Do you know all the lyrics to The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air? Remember Merrimick Cheese and the Fry Guys? Have an inexplicable love for the California Raisins? Can you remember Madonna's original face? Then you might be a part of the Doom Generation. Laugh until you cry with us each week as we stumble blindly through the memories of the movie and other random things that doomed us to be the salty, sarcastic, sardonic ladies you want to hang with. You know us. You love us. You can't f***ing live without us. Doom Doom Generation. Generation. Available everywhere you find podcasts. Do you like beer? Of course you do. Do you like good food? You better believe it. Then we have the show for you. It's the Hoppy Trails Podcast. I'm Nick. I'm Travis. And on each episode of Hoppy Trails, we invite you to come along on our journey to explore craft beverages and the foods that accompany them. Check out Hoppy Trails on hoppytrailspod.com or listen wherever you find your podcasts. Connect with us on Instagram at hoppytrailspod. Or reach out to hoppytrailspod at gmail.com. We would love to hear from you. Come travel the hoppy trails with us. And remember to always say yes to the hoppy ending. Cheers! Hello. 
we're back then. And we're back. <laughs> and we're back. Okay. This were some bones. And I hope you uh, <laughs> those dusty bones made you thirsty because now we're going to talk about some beer. Yes. And how beer ties into the gremlin uh, myth. It's the whole reason so, I'm here. That's right. <laughs> it is, actually. <laughs> For those of you who don't know, Travis has a uh, a sister podcast, not sister podcast, but under the Sequoia, in the Sequoia family uh, called Hoppy Trails. Hoppy uh, Trails. About beer. That's right. Yeah. And beer, you, are food. Beer, you are our beer aficionado. I am. Yeah. Yeah. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> so, the name Gremlin might actually come from a combination of the, the G from Goblin. Uh, and then it is combined with a brewery, and it's now a defunct brewery. It's not around anymore, but it was called Fremlin's. Oh. And Fremlin's Brewery uh, was in Kent in England, uh, close to an Air Force base. And it was a very popular beer for the airmen there. And then also, it seems to be one of the breweries that was able to ship their beer to other parts of the British Empire. So there were like air bases as far away as India, India, where these guys were drinking Fremlin's beer. So then the idea is that a gremlin is that somebody who was working on the mechanics on your plane was too hungover from Fremlin's the night before, <laughs> and they fucked up. <laughs> or or you yourself are too hungover from the Fremlin's, and you fuck up. That's the gremlin. As it turns out, though, the brewery, Fremlin's, actually had its own story of a tiny little spirit who lived in the brewery and either worked there on the beer and could uh, make sure it made sure everything went smoothly. But if you upset him, he could then harm production. His name was, um, they called him Hodfellow, which is a play off of uh, Robin Goodfellow, um, Shakespeare. They talk about Puck in Shakespeare, Midsummer Night's Dream. Oh, he has okay. a bunch of different names, and one of them is Robin Goodfellow. And it might be that this Hodfellow is kind of a play off of Oddfellow or Goodfellow. Um, but he uh, is said to be a, a, a beer soul. And a beer soul is actually a type of cobalt, which is another little uh, imp-type creature. And he hails from Germany. And in Germany, they really do have this whole tradition of the beer soul, which actually means a uh, beer donkey <laughs> because <laughs> it looks like a small donkey. They said it's either a three legged or a four legged tiny little donkey uh, that acts like Jeff the Mongoose. And he is a he likes beer and he hangs out in breweries. And the thing is that you have to give him like the first sip of beer out of each batch. Otherwise, he will ruin your future batches and will fuck shit up. Do you leave it in a platter as an offering and stick it, like, on the roof or something for him to drink later? Uh, I don't know how it works. I mean, depending on which region in Germany, they have yeah. different traditions. Yeah, in, in one place, uh, they say that he, the beer soul is also guilty of a, an activity that's called Aufhaken. Uh, which is basically he jumps on your back and then makes you give him a piggyback ride. Um, <laughs> but specifically targets drunk people leaving taverns. So when you see the drunk stumbling, it's he's there's only an stumbling. There's an invisible donkey yeah. on their backs. That, yeah. exactly. that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Um, yeah. Don't don't blame the beer. It's some little kobold jumping on your back. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then also in exchange for beer, uh, if you're like a home brewer and you brew in the home and you uh, which many households did in uh, older times, he would then do household chores for you as well in exchange for beer and make things uh, go smoothly. Nice. So much like a much like a brother-in-law or that friend from college <laughs> exactly or we'll work for beer yeah your, your buddy your buddy with a pickup truck you know, give him a six pack. <laughs> so there's a brewery called fremlin that has its own oral tradition that is part of their marketing of a tiny little cobalt who lives in the brewery uh so it's not that much of a stretch to see how you could get from fremlin to gremlin and then you combine it with other things that are already in, uh, you know, uh, folklore in these regions. And it's just a recipe to make, you know, a brand new little guy who then spreads like a meme in their ah, air force. Okay. You know, I, I, I think that uh, this is a really good explanation, especially, Cody, when you're talking about this brewery being one that their beer is being spread kind of throughout the kingdom. And probably some part of that is airmen airmen putting it on their planes and when they go yep. fly to different bases bringing it around i'm sure that's part of it um so them getting that you know indirect distribution 
and then talking about the stories and you know when they're all uh, talking drinking over a beer and, and uh, everything like that it's it's only natural that the story would start to shift and swell and then get repeated in other places as the beer yeah. then bounces and spreads. So, yeah, I think that's uh that's really interesting and probably the most likely source of this and why it's so central to airmen when this one mm, brewery yeah. was hopping around on the planes. Yeah. Hopping, hopping, hopping yeah, that's, right. <laughs> that's right. Uh, that brewery also has as their mascot an elephant, but uh, I didn't really look into much the, about the elephant because I was more interested in their little, you know, the Fremlin Gremlin. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and 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 also like at this time, you know, another thing is that the men might have actually been seeing shit in the air because think about it, it's a high stress environment. This is World War II. You're in, you know, there are anti aircraft guns just shooting up at you constantly as you fly over Europe to do these bombing runs. The chances of you coming back were not very high. The planes had never gone higher or faster. You know, they were hmm. it's, it's to the point where they're getting reaching altitudes where we are now having to have like oxygen masks, but these are rudimentary early oxygen mask systems. So they oh. are prone to be, you know, to fail. So you can have like oxygen deprivation um, and people starting to see things that are getting weird just from the stress. Uh, Charles Lindbergh, when he flew across uh, the Atlantic, in his autobiography, he said that around hour 22, it was about uh, dawn, the opposite of twilight, and he uh, saw things. He said he heard voices in the aircraft with him. He said he saw shadow figures that seemed to be flying alongside the plane and were actually passing through the fuselage of his plane and moving around. And uh, yeah, he said like, yeah, I was like really tired and strained. And your mind just starts, you know, going bored. Because also, he's like flying across the Atlantic solo. No one had done this before. There's no other, there's no radios. There's none of that shit for him to like be occupied. So it's just him and himself. And he starts to kind of go crazy. So yeah. there is this like actual psychological aspect to gremlins as well. Um, which is all the more reason to shrug it off is just, oh, it's little men, you know? You know, it, it's very interesting also because the older planes, even modern planes, but older planes also weren't very well insulated and things like that. And when you have those multiple propellers going, one of the things they the try to do, get them into synchronization, but that's also really hard to get them all going at the exact same speed. And once they're at the same speed, also being synchronized, so you're going to have these off vibrations and, and weird tones yeah. that are coming through. And that sort of stuff can can also cause hallucinations from the auditory effects. So, mm -hmm. yeah, really, really interesting. I, I'm surprised there wasn't more of it than, uh, than, than was reported. Yeah, that is interesting. After the war, as, uh, you know, uh, servicemen start coming back to regular life, a lot of them get other kinds of jobs. And some of those jobs involve the entertainment industry. And so we get to. Uh, I, I don't want to jump ahead to. Garth's oh, go Corner, ahead. We, we, we can we can zone. smooth. Our, we can just stroll our way right into Garth's corner. Continue. Okay. Well, well, you got the uh, Twilight Zone. The TV yes. series uh, has an episode about gremlins, but also you have. Uh, it's enough into the public consciousness that people know about gremlins, so that in 1970. Uh, when the American Motor Company comes out with their new car called the Gremlin. <laughs> what? Uh, How did I never hear about this? Yeah, which is a bold yeah. choice, which is a bold move on their part because it's like, dude, you're you're naming your car after something known for mechanical yeah, it's like, problems. Yeah, it's like the said, Chevy ah. Nova didn't sell very well in Mexico because Nova, no go. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, but actually, the, as I was researching this, I got like off on a tangent just researching the Gremlin, the car. I fucking love this car, dude. It is, uh, it's ugly in all the great ways you want something to be ugly. Uh, it was like 1970 it had a, uh, uh, it got a fuel economy of like 28 to 30 wow. miles per gallon in That's 1970. very impressive. Which is pretty yeah. big deal. Yeah, very impressive. Uh, they, they came out with an electric version. So once again, there's an electric gremlin, like <laughs> nice. gremlins too. Uh, it only had a range of 50 miles and it wasn't very successful and only a few of them were made, but they wow. tried to get the electric car market in the 1970s. Uh, Another car. So the Gremlin, though the vehicle Gremlin, is often mistaken for the Birthmobile uh, from Wayne's uh, World. Wayne's, yeah, from Wayne's World. You know, driven Garth's car. Oh yeah, Wayne's yeah. World, the Mirthmobile. The Mirthmobile. Yeah, is often mistakenly said to be a Gremlin, but it's not. But it is still made by the American Motor Company, and it's actually a car called the Pacer, mm. um, not a Gremlin. Uh, and then we get to 1984, which is Gremlins the movie. 
uh, written by Christopher Columbus, who or Chris Columbus, uh, noteworthy for also writing uh, such things as The Goonies. Uh, he directed Home Alone in Home Alone 2. He also directed the first uh, Harry Potter movie and a few of the other Harry Potter movies. But before he was a director, he was a struggling screenwriter, and he sold a script for a film called wow. Gremlins. Um, I didn't know he'd written that. Uh, which which originally was a hard R film. Like, there was no gizmo. <laughs> there were no cute little mogwai. Uh, <laughs> Billy, the main character Billy's mom's head gets ripped off and thrown at him down the stairs. Mm-hmm. It's very gory and bloody. Chris Columbus is so known for, like, heartwarming children's movies with a little bit of edge. I just love the idea that he wrote a R rated Kremlin's movie of the eighties. He said, <laughs> he said the inspiration, the inspiration came from that. He was living in a kind of shitty apartment that had rat infestation. And he woke up one night with his arm dangling off the bed and like touching the floor. And he could hear the rats scurrying around the hardwood floor. And he's like, dude, oh the rat God. could just like come and chew my, my hands up. It could chew my hands up. So that was the start of it. Like, what if you had tiny little monsters in your house <laughs> that becomes gremlins? Then Steven Spielberg says to him, hey, man, you know, this would be a lot more successful if we kind of like added a cute aspect and toned down the violence. Let's do the Spielberg, <laughs> turn up the Spielberg knobs. Yeah. Schmaltz. That's right. And smear <laughs> adorableness all over it. <laughs> In one of the early drafts, there was something kind of like Gizmo, but it wasn't nice. It was always evil. And then it mutates into something even more fucked up. Uh, <laughs> so then they keep saying. Yeah, so then they cutified it into this little guy. There's my. Uh, yeah. This is actually from. Ni- this is actually from. Oh, an original, an original gizmo. gizmo. Cootie's gizmo. holding up a little plastic gizmo to the camera. Um, he's actually like squishy. He's made of like oh. soft rubber. Um, I don't know how, uh, Chris Columbus learned about Mogwai, because Mogwai is oh, a thing. Oh, I didn't know that. Uh, that's really. So that's the. Ter- what's well, they, they aren't little furry creatures. Uh, so Mogwai, it's a, a Chinese uh, term. In the movie, you know, they get gizmo. Well, Travis, you haven't seen the uh, spoilers, the first one, but uh, I guess he, yeah, spoilers. What like, is this? <laughs> well, the second in the second one, he's in a, in the second one, he's in a Chinese store too. But uh, yes, he is. Yeah, so he's introduced in a China in a shop in Chinatown, and the guy calls him Mogwai. Uh, Mogwai is a uh, a term for um, in Cantonese. It's Mogwai, and it means uh, Mo can be broken down to demonic spirit, and Guai uh, means hmm. monster. Uh, in Mandarin, it's still Mogwai, but it thou means uh, demon and ghost or spirit. So they have like similar uh, meanings, but these are actually like adapted into Chinese from ancient Sanskrit, uh, where Gwai is like this term for monster. It actually is the same root for kaiju, like Godzilla. Oh, kaiju yeah. is also Gwai. Okay. Through cultural transmission in Eastern Asia, that's where this thing comes from. So in China, they have Mogwai. Uh, which are almost like they, they kind of act like um, like poltergeists. They do the same kind of stuff that poltergeists do, uh, but they target more like agricultural stuff. They'll fuck with mm. your crops, and uh, they are little. They and they they don't look like little furry creatures. In fact, they actually. Uh, I have a picture, an ancient drawing of a mogwai for you. This is a this is a Chinese mogwai coming up. If, right. Oh, it doesn't show up. It didn't show up as a picture, did it? Click to download. Issue click. detected. Oh, well. Oh, click to open. Oh, oh no. there it is. Oh, goo hoo 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 That's a cool picture. Let's see. You have to download. Down- he looks more right. like an. Uh, he looks more like what we'd think was like an ogre. Yeah, right? yeah. Like- he's got um some little little horns sticking up out of his cheeks. Big big body, dressed up. Um, really cool outfit. Uh. I mean, I can't even describe this. Just check it out on our Tumblr. Uh, that is a really so scary is, creature. Is is this is this a like a monster dragonish samurai who's not in samurai armor? I mean, there's clearly the sword on his back. Well, he wouldn't be he, he wouldn't be samurai because he's Chinese ah, and right. samurai is Japanese. Got it. Um, and he's he's writing on a book. So here's the thing though about Mogwai. They say that the origin of them is they might actually be spirits of deceased people. Like angry spirits, ah. but they but they can reproduce sexually, and they have a mating. Season. Oh, that's an interesting idea. You could have ghosts that make ghost babies. Now think about what we know about gremlins in the movie Gremlins and the in the Mogwai of the movie Gremlins. How would you? When would you suppose the Chinese Mogwai mating season is? Winter when it's after raining. midnight. It's at, no Travis. It's it's when it oh. rains. The rainy season. That's right. 
Because when you get them yeah. wet, right. that's when the little ones yeah. start popping but out. In the movie, they were yep, reproduced yep. asexually, <laughs> but the original ones actually... Oh, that's really interesting. And it, and it was because if they've reproduced, if they got if they got it on and got freaky when it rains, young Mogwai would be born at the same time as the crops are ready to harvest, ah. which would put them in prime position to cause trouble with the, the harvest. So they are like... Whereas the gremlins of the Royal Air Force are a personification of mechanical uh, mechanical issues with airplanes, the Mogwai in China are a physical manifestation of problems in farming and agriculture, specifically when you harvest and things that wow. can go wrong. Very interesting. Yeah. yeah, that's great. I love it. Yeah. So uh, as you see, uh, gremlins, uh, not as old, but actually built on older foundations, widespread. And then, uh, you know, it ties into, it seems like, most most cultures have their own equivalent of some tiny little thing, or not so tiny, but some kind of spirit who makes things go mm. wrong uh, that you could then defer blame to. You know what? It's it's funny because it's okay. like, yeah, there's some kind of gremlin something that is historically and tied to everything, right? You're like, well, here's one in these roots, and here's one over here. And the funny thing is, um, Cody, when you were first talking to me about that, you said, hey, there's a interesting history. Uh, there's a thing that potentially, you know, the origin is beer. And I said, Cody, the origin of everything is beer. Um, because it is. I mean, if you, if you look at a lot of stuff, you go like, oh, well, the reason they did this was because they ran out of beer. And so they had to, you know, land the Mayflower because they needed more beer and they had to set up a brewery. But um, so it's just it's just funny that Gremlins, their history also is like, yeah, they, they touch on everything just like beer does. Yeah. Uh- I'm pretty sure some of the earliest examples of writing we have is beer tabs, <laughs> you know, or like yeah. who owns barley yep, to what yep. brewery Absolutely. stuff like that. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Bre- bread and beer was the, you know, the reason to start setting up mass agriculture and grain. And, you know, I alluded to it, but th- there are a lot of uh, historical theories about, you know, the reason that uh, we landed on Plymouth Rock was not because it was where they planned yeah. to land, but it was because they ran out of beer. And when you're on a ship, you can't just drink water. It goes bad. You have to have alcohol to kind of keep it clean ish and so they said look we're out of beer we can keep going south to where we wanted to go where it's nice and warm and then we'll die on the way or let's land here and let's set up a brewery so we can have something you know clean to drink and wow. uh, you know history you is think what it that is. like they could have just set up a temporary brewery and then once that was ready they could just move the fuck good and nicer where climbs to go. a little for themselves but but i guess you know <laughs> you get drunk enough you're like hey man i'm in i'm settled into this chair that's it we already dismantled the boat and, tr- and, and used the wood to build this brewery shit i guess we're stuck here <laughs> that's it what, what do you think you make those uh, barrels and fermenters yeah. out of you take the boat yeah. apart you build the brewery that's just how it is yeah now uh, speaking of uh speaking of those puritans an interesting thing about these little people like gremlins and the, uh, you know, your, your beer donkeys and stuff like that and your kobolds, <laughs> it seems to be there's some evidence for this, but I, I need I need to do some more reading on this. But um, that in places where there are myths like that, where you have a tiny spirit that you can defer blame to when things go wrong, they didn't have like witch trials and witch hunts or as oh, many. Oh, um, yeah, yeah. Which isn't... Uh, not as not as like completely because like Germany they were they were killing a lot of witches in Germany. Uh, well, you they, know, they but, were they were killing a lot of people and saying it was because of witches. But let's yeah, let's all yeah. be clear they didn't kill a single witch, right? <laughs> yeah, true, true. <laughs> At least as um, we as we know them in our current understanding. Yeah, but there are but there are other areas where they have stronger, more common beliefs of these household spirits that can do this, and uh, you know they. Probably had, they had it's, a pr- it's a pressure than, release uh, valve on on societal blaming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We need so- we we need something like that today. I'm sure. I think we could. We think. I think we we, we need to bring back the gremlins. Um, before we uh, end this episode, we're gonna take a quick trip to Garth's corner. Yep. So yeah. uh, here we go. There is a fifth corner, beyond those known to square shapes. It is a corner as boundless as the meaning of two walls, and as timeless as my sense of fashion. It is the abutment between a well-researched podcast and just fucking around, between the twilight zone and a nice sunny day, and it lies between a wall of flowers that smell nice and are pretty, and another wall of mousetrap glory holes. It is a corner of imagination, and it is a corner which we call the Garth's Corner. (laughs) 
<laughs> so, um, rather than continue my Rod Sterling impression, Sterling, shoot, I keep I keep saying that. <laughs> the T is silent um, because I'm there doing is none. a. I'm doing a. Uh, we'll just do a very brief um, analysis of Nightmare at Twenty Thousand Feet. Have you guys seen this episode? This is one of the more famous. No. Yes. All, all right. Classic. So I just. Oh wait, no. Yes, yes, I have. I just watched this for the. I'd seen it before, but it had been a while, and uh, Kelly and I watched it the other night uh, in preparation for this. So I just wanted to talk about the episode because I really like that. It's one of the most – if you've seen any Twilight Zone, you've probably seen this one. It's probably one of the more referenced. One of the most – More parodied. parodied, Simpsons has parodied it and on and on. Um, This was the fifth season of – uh, the Twilight Zone, and it stars William Shatner, a young William Shatner. Uh, this would be about five years before he was ever Captain Kirk, so I think he was probably in his 20s. Yeah. Um, and he plays a, a guy who has just been released from um, a mental institution. He had a nervous breakdown, and so his wife is, is taking him back home. I guess he was um, institutionalized in some other part of the country, so he's flying home. And uh, it, it, it's great. They, they do this, this slow burn buildup explaining who he is and why he's nervous. And I guess he had his last freak out on, on a plane. And that's when he was institutionalized the first time. So he's like, have it, haven't we all? Yeah. Right? yeah. That's... <laughs> and this is back when it was fun to fly. It was it... air travel. Famously known for helping with your mental health conditions. I mean, also like, also like, yo, real talk. At this time in history, put the fucker on a train. There's more passenger trains. <laughs> yes. If you know he had a mental breakdown yes. on a plane, why? And he's he's going. He's moving domestically. It's too. not very so it's far. Like, yeah, you train. could easily do that. But um, I think maybe well, the character is really trying to be like, I'm all right. No, this is fine. It could be that he had that option, but he's like facing his fears and he he's trying to convince himself that he's okay, and he's he's doing yeah. pretty well, but things start to get. <laughs> But yeah, it's, but, but he's in the Twilight <laughs> Zone, and it's raining outside and storming, and and he looks out onto the wing, and he sees this little panda bear just hopping around. <laughs> and there's like, wait, what? The one of the funny things about it is they're going really fast, but the rain just slides yeah. right down, like. Because obvi- ob- yeah, because obviously the the studio where they're filming this isn't moving, so they have like a little rain. They have a hose making rain fall outside, but it's like not at an angle. <laughs> and and then you have this little panda bear guy who's totally defying physics, hopping around on the plane, and it it works because of the music yeah. and William Shatner. You know he he he's known for hamming it up, but he actually does a really good job for the kind of acting that was around in 1963. He, he he's pretty good in my opinion. There's something on the wing, some thing on the wing. Yeah, yeah, he's not doing the Jim Carrey <laughs> version. He's actually truly like yeah. I felt you, you end up feeling bad for him because it's the Michigan J Frog thing. It's like he sees it, and every time he tries to get someone yeah. else to look. They spend a frustratingly long time not looking and talking to him about how he's, like, losing it. And it's like, just look! And finally they do. And, of course, they never see it. It's only ever yeah. William Shatner who sees it. <laughs> I, I think I had, like, nightmares because of the part where he opens the, uh, the little sliding, yes. like, screen. And the thing is, like, full up, you know, like, like obnoxious kids would like put their mouth on a window yeah, yeah, and yeah. blow yeah. on a window. Yeah, it's doing that. It's doing that, and it's just for some <laughs> reason it freaks me out. Yeah, they close the little blind. I think I had the same nightmare as a kid because I saw this. I think we all, <laughs> anyone who's seen this. Anyway, Travis, I'm sorry if we're spoiling like everything, but you really should see this anyway. It's a very good episode. Yeah. <laughs> It's so good they made it twice. Yeah, they they did and I uh I watched that one for this as well but and and I don't get me wrong I love um I love Dick uh from uh John Lithgow, John Lithgow. I I love the guy from Third Rock from the Sun. <laughs> His name was Dick. Um yeah. His character was like, uh yeah, no. I, I he, yeah, you know what I'm saying. I knew where you anyway, yeah, um like Garth's just over here. Don't get me wrong. I love Don't Dick, get me wrong, but, but I also you know, love John like Lithgow. Yeah, no. Um Is that related? Yeah. <laughs> It's the strangest side. <laughs> uh, I that one was fine. I'm focusing this Garth's corner just on the Shatner one because they they do a much better job like explaining the person and like 
how he's troubled. And then he, he's, he's facing that thing where it's like, do I try to make this happen and make everybody think I'm crazy, but maybe I can actually stop it? Or do I just sort of let it go? But he's sure this thing, it's thing starts ripping the plane's wing apart. It like pulls the top off and yeah. then it'll like fly away. <laughs> and then it like comes back again. <laughs> and uh, yeah, go ahead, uh, Cody. Were you going to say something? Oh, but speaking of how uh, John Lithgow did the played the, the role yeah. in the movie, and then both of them were in Third Rock from the Sun together. That's true, because Shatner was the big giant head. And they referenced I don't remember it, that. Where, oh, that's uh, great. Yeah, we, like the, the big giant head comes yeah. to visit them, and he talks about how he flew on an airplane. So how was your trip, sir? Horrifying at first. I looked out the window, and I saw something on the wing of the plane. <laughs> The same thing happened to me. <laughs> oh, that's great. Oh, that's great. Yeah, I did not catch that. That's so funny. Uh, I, that was a great show. Um, <laughs> we really should reference um, Third Rock from the Sun well, more often on this on this show. That's oh, a yeah, it's a good show. show. Yeah. Uh, now, is this the... Er, yeah, there's more that happens. Or? I'm on to, like, the second act okay. of this. <laughs> Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know we're doing yeah, that. Yeah, more happens in the episode. So, so Shatner um, is is you know trying to decide what to do. Like, do I just let it go? Maybe I am crazy, but he's like pretty sure he's not. And like, should he let the whole plane die because he didn't want to speak up? And he finally steals the gun out of the. Air. I guess the air marshal was, or somebody has a, a gun in a holster. I think it's air the air marshal. Air marshal's asleep. <laughs> he sneaks up and just pulls the gun out. What? <laughs> Very Indiana Jones style, just like, you know, he replaces it with Yoink. some sand. The air marshal doesn't wake yeah. up. And then he, and he, and he sneaks yeah. back. And, he, and he, of course, he's he's seated right at the emergency exit, like the emergency window. So he pulls the lever. And it, everybody Ugh. get almost get he, like, gets sucked out of the plane. And everybody's holding his <laughs> holding him by his feet as he dangles out there. And, and, he, and he holds the gun up and he shoots. And he shoots the gremlin and uh, what? saves the day. But, but then, but you shoot the gremlin as you're flying, it's gone. There's no evidence, and everybody thinks you just freaked ah, out. So this is they're... the fun twist at the end. Spoilers, if I didn't say that already, because I'm going through this whole yeah, let's thing. Yeah, do it. So, uh, hard cut to him passing out, basically. Um, and then, and as, they, as you he, would if you hung out of a. Yeah, plane. exactly. So they wake <laughs> yeah. up, and he's on a gurney pretty much straight jacketed they're they're taking him off everyone else has deboarded the plane they're on the tarmac and he smiles to his wife he's like i i did it like everyone thinks i'm crazy but i know i saved the day and she's just like i'm yeah a yeah and, and you think poor guy he's <laughs> going back to the nut house he's deluded oh my gosh and like his poor wife and and they're they're they're, they're wheeling him away into the ambulance and it pans down and you see all the wreckage on the wing and Rod Serling comes in and says, soon he will be vindicated. <laughs> Bas- I, I forget yeah. how, how it yeah, goes exactly. Yeah. But basically he's like, yeah. no, they're going to find out pretty soon that the wing was torn apart. And even though the, the gremlin's gone, clearly something happened. So uh, it's sort of a happy ending. Unless... They say, listen, all this damage to the wing was from a bullet hitting it at extremely <laughs> high speeds and causing it to rip apart. This guy, <laughs> this guy the, no, it, it looks like they looks like claws. Yeah, no, he, like cl- claws. clearly the gun couldn't have done that. But yeah, that, that would be an interesting uh, uh, double twist, actually, if you wanted to go that way. Right, it? yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, clearly he shot the wing a bunch of times. That's why it's all messed up, yeah. I mean, I th- yeah. when I think of uh, when I think of of Twilight Zone, the episode that always comes to my mind first is the one with the guy who, like, you know, it, it, he's the last man on oh, Earth yes. and finally has time to read all the books, and then he steps on his glasses. <laughs> yep, yeah. And I'm like, so anytime there's something with the Twilight Zone, I'm like, there's gonna be a twist at the end that just puts somebody into eternal torment, like where you think finally everything's gonna be perfect for them. And then it's just so Twilight hot, Twilight you know? Zone was perfect at at doing sometimes one, sometimes the other, and you never quite knew. It, yes. it wasn't as yeah. bleak as Black Mirror, which always ends in eternal suffering. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's why I don't like Black Mirror. I can't watch it. Like it has no hope. Yeah, that shows that shows rough. I, I love Black Mirror, but yeah. um I can see why you uh, it's a it's uh, some people like it, some do not. Uh, in more recent seasons they don't all end uh horribly. But yeah. I watched four of them back to back. Oh no. And then I 
like almost had an existential yeah, crisis. Yeah, no, so you like, got to take that in small need to go samples. Outside. <laughs> One episode every few months, man. Yeah. Oof. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, so I got real excited though, Travis. But you said that that the, the episode you always think about is the one with uh, I think it's um, Burgess Meredith and yeah. his glasses in yes. the end of the world. Because in the Twilight Zone movie, which remakes the episode, the you know the episode of the airplane, the movie opens with two guys driving in a car and they start talking about Twilight it's Zone great. episodes. And the first one that's brought up, the first one that's brought up is like the, the driver's like. You know what? Anytime I think about the Twilight Zone, I think about that episode, and it's the yes. exact what he just said. So it's like, yes. dude, they knew. And then they I think knew. Dan Aykroyd's yeah. one of the guys, and I think he says, "No, I think that was the Outer Limits." No, no, I'm pretty sure that was <laughs> Twilight Zone. <laughs> oh no, it, was, it, was it might have been a different yeah, one. Yeah, talking I about. Yeah, but they mentioned yeah. a bunch of episodes but, of the Twilight Zone. <laughs> but okay, now are you ready for me to tie this? Yeah, all let's together? do it. This is the tie. Yeah. Yeah. Make it work. Cody's great at this. Okay. Neat little okay. bow. Here we go. Okay, so. The Twilight Zone episode, uh, is it, is it 20,000? Uh, 20,000, uh, I think Nightmare at 20,000 okay. feet, I believe. Okay. That is directed by uh, Richard Donner, who later would direct um, Of the Donner Superman. Party. <laughs> of Donner yeah. Party fame. <laughs> he, he directed the- Right? Yeah. Oh, was he not? No, that's wrong Donner, sorry. No, <laughs> wrong Donner. Much too late. Uh, he was late to that party. Nah. Like, you know, 100, uh, yes. Over 100 years late. Yes. <laughs> so- <laughs> But he, he so he directed Superman movies and then it, he directed The Goonies. The Goonies was written by Chris Columbus, who wrote Gremlins. Whoa, yeah. nice, nice, wow, <laughs> that's great. It's it's I it's a it. gremlin eating in a mogwai eating its own tail. It's a mogwai its eating its own tail, eating yes. its own ears. <laughs> yeah, what, what's that called? The Ouroboros or something like that? Yep, it's a, Ouroboros. Yeah, yeah. mogwai gremlin. Ouroboros. I like it. I like it. <laughs> it's poetic. Yeah. And the gremlin, it, he, the gremlin centipede. Drinking a beer. <laughs> drinking a beer. Just throw a beer in there. Yeah. Yeah, and a beer. Makes everything better. This has been <laughs> so, the Least Haunted Podcast. <laughs> 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 All right. So uh, hopefully everybody uh, had a, a fun time, learned a lot about gremlins. Yes. Uh, this was l- and... a loosely um, Christmas related because Gremlins is barely a Christmas movie and it's December. So happy holidays. It's not happy barely. Holidays. It is. Is it? It okay, is a Christmas. Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah the whole, it's all. Yeah. The whole thing is theater. Gizmo's a fucking Christmas present. That's dude. true. Yeah, that's <laughs> look. True. If Die yeah. Hard is a Christmas movie, Gremlins is a Christmas movie. All right. Oh, I know you. Gre- Gremlins. Gremlins is more of a Christmas movie because it actually has like Christmas lights and like snowmen and jingle bells. <laughs> I should. And... I should see Die Hard sometime. <laughs> I've heard it's good. I've never seen. Wow, Die I don't Hard. know. We don't have time to crack into that. <laughs> yeah, that's. <laughs> <laughs> we'll add it to the list. Garth's add it, list add it to movies. Garth's list of, of cultural <laughs> touch, cultural pile. touchstones that I miss. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, um, th- yeah, so actually, speaking of Christmas, this is our uh, last, what we'd call air quote, real episode of the year. Yeah, our next one um, is going to be a special. Yep, yeah, another Christmas Ooh, special. Nice. Uh, I think you're, and, and, and you know, everybody's invited to consent fetishist Rassies 100% consensual christmas extravaganza oh yeah <laughs> i'm gonna have to uh, clear my throat and get into the razzy <laughs> voice which hopefully will not be too annoying for half an hour or however long the episode is i'm i'm a I'm an exciting soon. blend of titillated and terrified this is gonna be outstanding everyone's <laughs> welcome at razzies <laughs> there will be a waiver yes. um, sign here <laughs> and then uh we got to thank our Monster Squadron producers yes. on Patreon, without whom this would not be possible. Uh, first and foremost at the top of the list is our guest today, uh, Travis Alexander. That's right. So, That's Travis right. Alphabetically. Alexander. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Followed by the Bi Barbarian, Rachel Krieger, Tom Dahl, Justin Duckham, Kelly Flynn, Gunnar Franks, Carla Harrington, Havelock, New Jared. Brian Lamb, TJ Levin Hagen, Alicia Overton, Jordan Ramey, uh, Blue Roan, and Tatum. Nicely done. I wasn't counting, but I think you got everybody. Oh, plug your stuff, Travis. We did a bit, but uh, oh, you yeah. got your own podcast. Yeah. Uh, yes. yes. Yeah, I'm a co-host on a show called the Hoppy Trails Podcast. It's a show about uh, uh, craft beer and food and enjoyment of life generally we get into a lot of fun stuff on there so 
you know, if you're into craft beer and food and like that, it's good. But we also just talk about some general stuff. So definitely come check us out. I also um, recently was elected again to the board of Umanum Brewing, California's first and currently only cooperatively owned brewery. And um, as soon as I was elected, I was appointed president of the board. (laughs) And so I'm, uh, you know, president of a brewery right now. And, oh, that's uh, super cool, dude. Wow. Yeah. Congratulations. It's, it's definitely fun, and uh, I haven't been on the board in a while, so it's uh, it's exciting time. If you're in California, uh, take a look for Amanum Brewing. And uh, if you're anywhere in the world, give us a listen on Hoppy Trails. It's, uh, it's a good time. And, you know, check out all the shows on Sequoia. We make some good stuff. We put our hearts into yeah. it. We're good people, and uh, you should support us. <laughs> yeah. Um, so when are we going to get a uh, Least Haunted Beer? <laughs> yes. That's actually a good idea. We should. Well, you know, we've actually talked and chatted about doing a, a couple of different things. So, yeah, I think we should get a project going. Maybe if we maybe if we all get a little bit of an off season here. But I know we're all such, <laughs> you know, when we, all have, when we all have when we all have free time. Yeah, I know. Dude, we don't yeah, we don't take yeah. a week off. Yeah, <laughs> I would love to have at least haunted beer. I think that's a great idea. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. I one last thing. I, I said we would talk about it at the very beginning, and I already told people I w- we would mention it, so I've got to. Uh, we have two quick spooky checks. Uh, oh, they're real quick. Nice. Um, on the dis- so on the Discord uh, listeners, you can go on our Discord, and if you have a uh, spooky check to report, you can there. Uh, our first one comes from By Barbarian, uh, who they were uh, on their coyote tracking adventures, uh, doing their job. And they found a tiny little figurine on the hillside that is a, uh, uh, we'll post pictures. Uh, well, you can see it on the Discord, or you can go to Tumblr and see it. It is a, uh, a little, maybe about six inch tall, uh, white robed skeletal figure. Looks like a Grim Reaper. Oh, cool. And uh, as near as I can tell, what they found is a figurine of Santa Muerte. Uh, it's uh, a female personification of death. Saint and death. actually a... Yeah, uh, yeah, she's uh, pretty cool. And so uh, we're actually going to, in the future, uh, maybe one of the first episodes of the next year, will be a whole episode about Santa Muerte. Ooh. And we'll talk about that. It's the fastest growing religious movement in the Americas. Wow. Uh, worshiping Santa Muerte. Cool. And then the uh, the other one comes from uh, Seti Fan, uh, who <laughs> was walking to uh, their dumpster area at their apartment. And they just found like a large uh, kitchen knife sunk into the ground. Just a big ass knife in the ground. Um, Take yeah. it home, Seti you know? fan. Sharpen it up. <laughs> it's, it's free knife. Free knife. <laughs> if look, if like if if Fallout or uh, Skyrim have taught me anything, you pocket every free fucking knife and piece of cutlery you find. Yeah, yeah, it's true. It's true. You never know when that's going to come in handy. Uh, so those were our spooky checks. Two things that are kind of weird and spooky to find out and about. Thank you for spooky and... ch- for for giving us those spooky checks, y'all. Yeah, yeah. appreciate it. And uh, I think with that, we'll we'll wrap it up, and uh, we'll see everybody after the new year. Okay. Um, unless you show up to you know Rassi's consensual Christmas party. Oh yeah, Christmas, all know. are invited. Oh. Uh, also, uh, speaking of Discord, sorry, uh, tonight, <laughs> tonight on our Discord, uh, if you listen to this on release date, which is the 8th of December, uh, at 7 p.m. Pacific time, we are doing a movie night uh, tonight on the Discord. We are going to be watching uh, 1984's Gremlins. Nice. Um, so if you haven't seen it uh, and you want to watch it, and now that you know more about the lore, come and join us uh for movie night tonight to watch gremlins oh and that will be re- real quick let, let me throw something out here i forgot based on uh, your release schedule anybody who's listening to this on release day nick and i will be in oregon i am traveling up to oregon so if you are in the oregon area we'll be around eugene and if that's a place where you are hit us up on the discord or contact at hoppytrails.com or hit us up on instagram or whatever let us know. We'd love to meet up with you. We'll grab a beer. We'll hang out, take some pictures, and uh, it'll be a good time. So if, uh, nice. if you're nice. hearing this and you're there, let us know. Sweet. Excellent. Okay. All right. Anything else? I think that's all the things. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, well, in that case, uh, as we say uh, every time and for the last time this year. Are you ready, Travis? Until the next. Oh, I'm ready. Are you ready? Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Until next time, the only thing that's haunted is you. Woo! The whole world is <laughs> All right. Okay, guys. Good. That was fucking fun. That was a great episode. Yeah.
Yeah, that was good. Yeah. Introducing the Levi's Gremlin with seats of the pants. Look at this! Orange stitching and buttons. It's even got the Levi's tab on the front seat. The rest is pure Gremlin. Styling, economy, six-cylinder engine, and it's backed by the buyer protection plan. Levi's Gremlin, the car that wears the pants. It's done. I love it. It's in the movie next. The Least Haunted Podcast is recorded before a dead studio audience and is a presentation of Sequoia Productions, LLC.